For the next 10 years, Jonathan found himself living comfortably in Atfalholm, while also being content as a farmhand under Azrael's guidance. Even if he wasn't living in the lap of luxury, he was happy to be in a proper home for once instead of living on the streets, scrounging for scraps and leftover food. It also helped that Ambrosia and her family happened to also live near Apfahol, with Jonathan having accepted their offer to employ him. During the day, Jonathan would go about helping people with their chores, such as cleaning stables, collecting eggs from chickens, chopping firewood, and more. He even had a part-time job working at Ambrosia's home as he helped pick the many apples that were growing in her family's orchard. Ambrosia's father, who was revealed to be a marquis named Damocles Pomum, was always kind to Jonathan as he never forgot about the young man saving his daughter and was quite generous towards him when it came to payment. Interestingly enough, Jonathan would develop a crush on Ambrosia but never got the chance to, to tell her due to his insecurities regarding his status as a commoner while she was a noblewoman. When Jonathan wasn't helping out, the town with his skills, he was often seen sowing and maintaining the crops grown by Azrael and doing chores on the farm. Ironically, despite being on sour terms with the Baron who almost got him killed back in the kingdom, Jonathan was friends with the Baron's son Phineas, who was nothing but friendly towards him. Though the Baron did not approve of their friendship, Phineas continued to see Jonathan and spend time with him whenever he could. Because of this, Jonathan was seen as the town's most kindest and diligent resident to ever exist. Of course, what most people didn't realize was that there was another reason as to why Jonathan was so hardworking and diligent even compared to most of the town boys. For one thing, Jonathan had an increased stamina and energy to the point where he barely got tired nor did he need to eat or sleep. Not just that, whenever he did get injured, minor or not, he would always get back off and brush off whatever harm came to him, even more suspicious at least to those who had a good eye. He never bled, nor did he show signs of pain whenever he did get injured, physically speaking. While he did eat and sleep like any normal person, it was to mainly keep the secret that most people didn't know about him. Namely, the fact that he was the newest reaper, and one who had all the benefits that came with it. Over the next 10 years, Jonathan would train under Azrael in the art of combat and learn how to utilize his reaper abilities such as summoning his spirit weapons, which mainly came in the form of a scythe or even a sickle as per tradition, flight, invisibility, telekinesis, super strength, super speed, and of course the ability to see spirits of some kind. He was then taught about the history of Terrestria from an angel's perspective, and how demons were the natural enemy of humans, fey folk, and Theos, the creator of Terrestria. As a result, it was up to Azrael and Jonathan to ensure that demons and restless spirits did not harm any more people, while making sure to preserve the balance between the afterlife and the mortal plane. Jonathan eagerly took in the lessons and hoped to use his powers for good while fulfilling his mother's wish for him to live life to the fullest. During his training, he was visited by the previous Reapers, who were chosen by Azrael and helped fight the force of evil, along with guiding souls to the afterlife. Each of them shared their wisdom, life stories, and experiences with him, which Jonathan admired them for, and vowed to continue their good work and honor them. Eventually, he would get a chance to show the fruits of his training once he turned 17. One day, Jonathan was summoned by Azrael after working on the apple orchard belonging to the Pomum family. Once he was called back to the farm, but not before bidding the rest of the Pomum family members and workers farewell, he met up with Azrael in the main barn where he would be given his first mission. As it turns out, there was an incident involving a minor noble family who had been attacked by brigands. Said family was comprised of a father, mother, and a single child who was a little girl with blonde curly hair. When the ghosts of the parents begged Azrael to save their daughter before the brigands came for her, the Angel of Death agreed by tasking Jonathan and finding the girl and dealing with said brigands if they were still after her. He even gave a brief history of who said brigands were and revealed how they were a bunch of petty robbers who murdered innocent people regardless of whether they were poor or rich and murdered this particular noble family because they were easy prey. Of course, hearing this made Jonathan's blood boil and was enough to make him agree to the mission. But in order to do so, he had to undergo a certain act that would allow him to fully access his powers, namely by ripping off his face. 
In any other situation, he would have experienced excruciating pain and died of severe blood loss, but because he was powered by the Angel of Death himself, he changed it to a deadlier form. Even so, his heart was still pure and good, so he did not grow mad with power. Rather, he would use to protect the innocent, both dead and alive, while defeating those who were irredeemable. The moment he unlocked his full potential, Jonathan was deemed the Herald as his title by Azrael before being sent away for his first mission. The newly dubbed Herald flew as fast as he could to the location where the incident involving the brigands occurred, only to notice a little girl running through a forest that just so happened to match the description of the noble family's daughter. When he saw how she was being chased by the seedy brigands who tended to get rid of any loose ends, including her, the Herald immediately jumped into action. No mercy, no restraint for such vile beings that would dare harm a child for their own twisted desires. The Herald swooped in, blocking their way while ensuring the little girl got away safely. At first, the brigands demanded that he move out of the way, only for him to refuse, prompting them to laugh as they clearly didn't realize just how much trouble they were in. It wasn't until a bolt of lightning struck and thunder rolled in did they see just what exactly they were looking at. Before they could do anything, the Herald immediately struck first, slicing and dicing at them with blood splattering everywhere, only for said blood to quickly disappear due to having absorbed them into his body. The brigands didn't stand a chance and could only try running away while letting out screams of helplessness and agony in the process, but the Herald didn't care. No, he spared none of them after seeing how cowardly and petty they were, especially after seeing them carry all the stolen treasure they had taken from the innocent family they slaughtered earlier. By the time he finished off the last robber who tried to abandon his comrades to die, Jonathan reaped their souls as per his mission and coldly lectured them for their greed and vices before sending them to the darkest pits of hell. Once he was done with them, he went to check on the little girl who had escaped to make sure she was alright. Fortunately, by the looks of it, she had found herself a new home which came in the form of a humble cottage just outside of the woods, though it was surprising to see that said cottage was inhabited by talking bears of all people. He quickly realized that they must have been humans who got turned into bears by some kind of enchantment. He would keep that in mind and inform Azrael about it when he got back. For now, he would sit around in his transparent form, making sure the little girl was truly safe with her new family. After spending a couple hours watching over the little girl, whose name was revealed to be Goldia, he deemed the bear family as worthy of protecting her before heading back to Azrael's farm. As soon as he arrived, he gave his report to the Angel of Death while informing him of the little girl's status as well as the status of the brigands he dealt with earlier. Azrael thanked Jonathan for accomplishing the mission and made sure to inform Goldia's deceased parents in the afterlife. Seeing that this was the first mission he ever accomplished, made Jonathan relieved, but he knew it wasn't over yet, as there would be many more challenges and battles for him to partake in the future. Even so, he refused to let it deter him, let alone scare him into stopping, as he had the power to protect the innocent and stop evildoers. He was no ordinary farmhand, but a hero in his own right, whose name would spread fear and respect in the hearts of many for years to come. For he was the 